Welcome back to Easy Fish Tanks, everybody. Today we're going to be doing a little maintenance on the 125 gallon community cichlid tank. So this tank is out in my living room and I've been hearing some gurgling and chugging, chugging sounds coming from the Cascade 1000 canister filter I have. So I think the problem that is causing that is going to be this pre-filter that I have on the intake for the canister filter itself. What happens is this gets clogged up with detritus and then the water flow gets reduced and then air gets into the line and you get a gurgling sound and reduce flow. So we're gonna go ahead, clean out that intake filter. And then we're also down here, you can see is where I have my cascade canister filter. So we'll go ahead since we're gonna do some maintenance and just clean that out today. We follow over here on the opposite side of the tank. So I have my Fluval FX4 running on this. So when I do maintenance on this aquarium, I don't clean the filters super often. But when I do, I only change one at a time. That way I don't disturb the beneficial bacteria load. So let's give you guys a quick overview of what I have in this tank. So I have a couple African cichlids, and then I have these convict cichlids. I have an interesting story about how I acquired these that I'll tell you guys about in another video. But they're breeding. Let's see if I can get a shot. There's some juveniles down there. I know we got some babies in here too. Oh yeah, there they are. Let's see. Look how beautiful that female is. See if I can get a shot of these babies. Let's see if they'll come out on camera. You can sort of see them in front of that rock swimming around a little bit. It's hard to pick up. They're in there. Wow, look at the colors on that female. Stunning. And I also have a Severum in here. One Severum in here. It's kind of a mixed match tank. If I had to start over again, I would probably get a couple more of each kind of fish. I love this Severum. This is one of my favorite fish in here. And then let's see, let's move over here. More convicts. Here's my red tail shark. So this guy's getting pretty big too. This is a six foot tank. So these are some big fish in here. Now I know you might be thinking, oh, that's a little bit overstocked. All right, just a quick pause on the video. If you guys are liking the content so far, please don't hesitate to drop me a like and a subscribe so you can help me grow my channel. All right, let's get back to it. But with cichlids, you really want to have a high number a fish in there to spread out the aggression. All right, there's another African cichlid behind that log. Then an angel fish, koi angel. I have two green terrors. One of the green terrors when I got it only had one swim fin. I think it's this one. Yeah, you can see he doesn't have a swim fin on the right side of his body. So he lost that. And there's another green terror back there. Okay, let's get a shot of this Cuban. This Cuban is absolutely stunning. Check that bad boy out. And then behind the Cuban, I have a jaguar cichlid. That's a female jaguar cichlid, and this is a male Cuban cichlid. They're actually a breeding pair. I have a, t a paludarium set up with their young in it. I'll have to make a video of that for you guys as well, so you can see what that looks like. What else do we have in here? I know I have a sunshine, or a sailfin, pleco rather. And then in the back, if this darn Cuban would move, I got a striped Raphael catfish, which I also love. He's awesome. He's chonky. He just comes out and hoovers up all the food. It's great. Technology-wise, on this tank is I have a wave maker right up here. These guys are hungry, so they're gonna keep swimming up. I got a wave maker up there. That way we can get agitation of the water surface so we can get a good oxygen exchange rate going on in here. I had those two canister filters I showed you. And then I had recently just got these Nikru lights. I love these Nikru lights. They make the fish look so good. If I had live plants in here, which I can't, I've tried a thousand times, and these bullies just eat them up, rip them right out. All right, well, there's a brief overview of the tank. Now I'll show you how I do go about doing maintenance. Let's get into it. Alrighty, so first things first, what we're gonna do is we're gonna get this pre-filter sponge off the intake for our Cascade 1000. I believe that's what's causing the gurgling noise and it is super annoying. Got my trusty little bucket here to put the pre-filter sponge in and I'm just gonna rinse off the sponge in tap water. It's fine, I have enough media inside my canister filters where I don't have to worry about whatever biological media I kill on the actual intake for the sponge. You also always want to make sure you have a towel to dry your hands off. So I'm going to reach in here. Now a lot of people that I've had over are like, oh, aren't you worried the fish, including my children, aren't you worried the fish are going to bite you? No, they've never tried to bite me. They all have <laughs> very sharp teeth, but they've never tried to bite me. So I'm just going to stick my hand in here. I'm going to reach down, get off. Oh yeah, there we go. That's a big difference already. That's a big difference already. Okay, the sound has already stopped. So that's what was going on. That was causing the gurgling sound. Now it's gonna push some of the air out of the system and it should be running quietly pretty soon here. We'll let it go through its process. Yeah, so you can see all this debris coming out of the water. Let me get you closer. So you can see here that the pre-filter was really reducing the water flow. So all the bits of detritus that was stuck inside the 
lines of the canister filter are now being shot in. And look at that flow coming out of there now. So that's what was causing that. Now I'm definitely gonna have to do a water change after releasing all these particles into the tank. Look how much got blown around in here. That's wild. So yeah, the pre-filter sponge was just really reducing the flow and that was causing the canister filter to make noise. Generally, if your filters start making noise, that means it's time to do maintenance. So we can see, for, I was gonna maintenance the whole cascade filter, well, we can see how good the flow is coming out now. So it was literally just a pre-filter sponge. So I'll show you guys a little bit more after I wash this sponge off. All right, now I got the pre-filter all cleaned out. Just rinse that out. It was, it was really dirty. It, it needed to be, to be rinsed out. We got so much better flow in here now. That was the play. But now you can see the water's all mucked up with all the yummy bits that were stuck in the actual filter line. So I'm going to show you how I go about doing a water change on a 125 gallon fish tank. You can see here I have this hose running here. This is like a Python hose. I don't know the exact brand, but the most popular brand is called a Python hose. So I can hook up this long hose all the way out to the spigot that I have connected on the outside of my house. And depending on which way I turn the valve, I can either drain the water out or fill the tank. These hoses are a huge time saver when you're dealing with fish tanks that are over I'd say even 40 gallons. So if you have a larger tank, I'd super recommend you can order these on Amazon, pick one up, you won't regret it. You don't wanna be doing the bucket method, the five gallon bucket method, when you're doing a 50% water change on 125 gallons. So let me give you a little closer look on how you use one of these Python hoses for a water change on a large tank. Let's get to it. Alrighty, so as you can see here, I just put the siphon part of this water change hose into the top of my tank. And once I start the spigot outside, once I turn the water flow on, it's gonna create a negative pressure and that's gonna create suction, which will have water flow through this point all the way outside. And I'll show you what that looks right like right now. And you can see I have my hose. It's a long hose. It's a hundred foot hose. So I have it gracefully running all the way to outside my house. Alrighty, and this is where that long hose leads to. So as you can see, hopefully it's coming out on camera. I can't see because of the glare, but this is the end piece to that hose. So I have it connected to my regular garden hose at this point right here. Okay, so this is where it connects to the regular garden hose. And then depending on which way I have this valve faced will determine whether I'm filling up the tank or draining the tank. So if it's in the open position, which runs vertically along the attachment here, come through this pipe right here, and it's gonna shoot right through all the way out the end, creating a pressure differential here, which will suck the water out of the tank. Let's get this turned on, and we'll start draining the tank. All right, so here we go. We're gonna turn on the water flow for the hose. Sneak peek of my turtle pond I have back here too. All right, so you can see we got a lot of water coming out here now. So that's gonna create the suction and we're gonna start draining the tank. Once I get a flow, okay, you see how that changed? That means the water from the tank is coming out now. So once I have water from the tank coming out, what I can do, I can leave, uh, leave this as is, but what I can do now is I can shut off the flow from the hose and that the suction is still gonna keep going. That way I'm not wasting an absolute metric load of water. So I'm gonna turn off the hose and we will still be draining our tank. The best way to do it so you don't waste a bunch of water. All right, turn this bad boy off. Turn this bad boy off. Okay, that's shut off now. It's a little bit slow. I had a fly land on my hand. It's a little bit slow, but man, does it sure beat the bucket change method. So we're just gonna let this do its thing. It'll probably, it normally takes about 20 minutes to drain out about 75% to 50% of the water. So that's what we're gonna do now. And then we'll come back and we'll start filling the tank up. All right, it's literally only been 30 seconds since I showed you the scene from outside. So I'll show you little clips, little incremental clips of the water draining. You can see after only about a minute, we've already taken about an inch of the water volume down. So that's great. That's fantastic. While we're draining this bad boy out, I'm gonna go ahead and do other parts of the maintenance that I normally do. So just so you guys know, with this many fish in here, and even though I have two large canister filters, I still do about uh, 25 to 50% water change weekly, just to keep this water healthy and clean for these guys. So this is what I use to clean the glass. It's a, uh, it's like a metal scraper. It works super well. And I found that since I have a sand substrate, if I use those magnetic ones that you move up and down on here, 
you can get sand stuck in between the felt side and the kind of like velcro side and that's going to scratch your glass so i've opted towards using these and they're super simple to use i'll show you guys how you use these all right we'll go right here so it's pretty self-explanatory but i just come down like this and you just give it a good old scrape good old scrape and i'll do this across the whole tank I almost forgot. I almost forgot. We need to unplug our wave maker so that we don't ruin it. So we'll do that right now. Let's see, which one's the wave maker? Is it this one? It was that one. I got it on the first try. First try. All right. So that wave maker is just going to get obnoxious. So this wave maker right here, right here, if that runs dry while I'm doing the water change, I'm going to ruin that wave maker. So I don't want to do that. I picked that up at Petco and it works great for getting that water, uh, that surface agitation on the water. interesting thing I wanted to point out to you guys is that how the Sevrum changes its colors so intensely every time I do a water change it gets this lighter color it gets stressed out I mean that's clearly what that means right but it gets stressed out but I you know I think it honestly looks <laughs> it looks pretty nice when it's stressed out obviously I don't want to stress it, stress it out look how dark that back lateral line is on this fish what a beautiful fish oh and here's my Jack Dempsey I also have an interesting story about this guy both the convict cichlids and this Jack Dempsey were a rescue. I'll do a full video on, on how I came upon that a little bit later. But yeah, at the beginning of the video, this guy was super dark. But whenever I do a water change, he lightens up dramatically. Look at that. All right, so we're about 15 minutes into draining the water. And you can see we've already got a good chunk of the water out. So here's where our levels are at. I'm going to drain it. Not a whole 50% this time around. Oh, I'll probably drink. I think this is probably about 30%. So I don't want to have to turn off all my filter or all my heaters. All right, I'm pretty happy with that water level there. So now I'm going to show you guys how we go about filling this tank up with the Python hose. Let's check it out. All righty, so to get the flow going back in the tank, we're going to turn back on the water. Now you can see the water. Now you can see the water flow is back on. Now it's super simple to redirect the flow of the water. We're just gonna take this and we're gonna turn it upwards. So when it's up like this, running horizontal to the hose, that means that the water coming from the garden hose is coming in through here. It's getting blocked right here and it's gonna be going, shooting into the tank. So now let's go put our dechlorinator in before we add too much of this untreated tap water. So it doesn't really matter what kind of water conditioner you use, as long as it says, dechlorinates aquarium water. So you can see this one removes chlorine and chloramine and detoxifies heavy metals. Super strength. So I got the concentrated form because I have eight fish tanks. So let's one-handed open this right here. All right. Now we're gonna pour a little bit into here. We don't need a whole lot because it's concentrated. That should be good. And I'm just gonna take this and I'm going to pour it where the water flow is so it gets dispersed. Perfect. Voila. That's it. That is it. Now, if you don't have the concentrated form, 
you don't have the concentrated for them, then you're gonna have to add a bit more. But like I said, I have so many fish tanks that I'd go broke buying the chlorinator in the unconcentrated form. So now the water's filling up. It's coming through this hose here. You can see I don't have it filling up super fast because I don't have the, I can't control the temperature of the water coming out of the spigot from outside. So I fill it up pretty slow, but I've never ever had an issue with not matching the water temperatures. It's such a large volume of water that I've never had an issue on this size tank of not matching the water temperatures. All right, so we'll let this bad boy fill up. Then I'm gonna put on the pre-filter sponge. I'm gonna put that back on the filter from the back over here. Cause right now I don't have it on there. Let's see if we can get a shot of it. Yeah, you can't really see it, but I have it kind of hidden behind those plants. So the fish are doing fine. And we'll get that pre-filter back on. That way I don't have to constantly be maintenancing my canister filter. With the pre-filter, that's gonna catch a lot of the particulates before it makes it to the canister filter. Man, these fish are stunning. I love these guys. The jaguar up top and the cubit on the bottom. Just such spectacular fish. All right, I'll catch you guys in a minute. Okay, almost got that water level topped up. But look at this Severum again. He's like a chameleon. He just changes colors constantly. Oh, constantly during the water change process. Uh, he, he wants food. He's a hungry boy. He's a hungry boy. What a beautiful fish. All right, we're almost done. Let this keep filling up. Oh, and look at this female convict. It's in its breeding dress. So stunning. There's some baby swimming around right by her too, but I don't know if it's gonna pick it up. Look at that. Oh my goodness. So beautiful. The male's blocking the view. He says, this is my lady. Wow, stunning colors. Yeah, you can see a little baby swimming around in the front. Absolutely beautiful fish. All right, while we're waiting for the rest of this to fill up, I'll just show you guys how I use glass cleaner to clean the fish tank here. So, got some glass cleaner, just gonna spray it on here. This is the kind of stuff I use because that's what I got. All right, we do it this way so we don't risk getting some into the tank. We'll just clean up the glass here. We'll just clean up the glass, get these water spots off. Get all these water spots off the tank. Yeah, I mean, we go through all the work of draining the water, scraping the glass. Might as well keep the glass looking clean. Might as well. There we go. See, in this way, we don't run into the risk of getting some overspray into the tank. Looking good. Looking good. Okay, and look, our water levels are there. So we're gonna go shut off this python hose real quick before we flood our whole house. Alrighty, now that we're all filled up and looking good, we're all looking good, everybody's healthy and happy in here. The Severn will get dark again in a minute. He's a silly guy. Glass is all clean. All right, now we got my pre-filter. It's all cleaned out. It was really dirty. It was really dirty. So much black goop. But we're gonna get this guy back on. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do this with one hand though. So let me put down the camera and set that up so you guys can see how I slipped this on. All right, so now I'm gonna try to get this pre-filter back on without blocking your guys' view. Look how curious these fish are. Look at this jaguar. He's staring, my hand's in the water. He's staring directly at it. Or she actually, it's a female. All right, let's reach in here. I'm just gonna lift that up a little bit. Do it blind. Okay, I cut a hole in the top of this sponge. This is just a regular sponge. That's how I did that. Let's keep it so it's kind of hidden behind that plant. Perfect. All right, now we're ready to turn everything back on. Get everything back on here. Got to open up the cabinet. I'll scoot you guys back for a second. You see there's still some detritus I came out of the sponge. That's fine. That's no problem. Let's scoot this back a little bit. Okay, we're gonna plug the wave maker back in. Plug that old wave maker back in. I can do this without blocking the camera. There we go. Now the wave maker's moving again. You see how much water that wave maker pushes through the tank? I love that thing. It's great. Get one final shot of my friends in here. Their nice new water change. Alrighty, so our glass is all clean, our water's all clean, our pre-filter sponge is clean. So now we got good water flow through here. And you can see everybody's happy. 
Everybody likes a good water change. Everybody likes a good water change. And there we go. Voila. And you can see what kind of flow I got in that tank too. So that wave maker, the wave maker pushes everything from the right side of the tank. And the flow goes all the way across here, hits this wall, and comes back down. You can see the plants are bending that way. Those plastic plants are bending that way. So that helps to sweep detritus. You can see, even though I got all these fish in here, the bottom of the tank, I don't, I don't gravel vac this tank. But you can see the bottom doesn't have a bunch of poop and stuff built up on it because a wave maker helps to just whisk everything around, keep everything in the water column so that it can get sucked up by the filter. But yeah, everybody, so that's gonna do it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed coming along with me on my water change adventures. Like I said, I'm gonna have a video on how I came across these convict cichlids. It's actually a really sad story on how I got the convict cichlids, but they're in a much better place now. Oh, I miss, I miss some algae right here. I miss some algae right there. I, I rescued these from someone that was pretty much just abusing them. Same thing with, you guys probably noticed, this jaguar in the back has really ripped up fins. I got it like that. So that one was a rescue as well. Well, he went to go hide now. But yeah, I'll tell you guys in one in one video about how I came across these convict cichlids and that jaguar. He's, he's poking his head out. He's poking his head out. Come on, buddy. It's okay. But he's doing great. He's he's a healthy guy. You know, unfortunately, he has just... Those fins aren't ever going to grow back. I've had them now going on six months, and they haven't grown back at all. The, that damage was not done in my tank. These fish, even though they can be really aggressive, I seem to have a good level out of aggression in this tank. Oh yeah, that's it for today's video. Again, I appreciate you guys tuning in as always. If you want to see more videos like this and you don't want to miss out on the story behind the convict cichlids and the Jack Dempsey, then please make sure to like and subscribe so you never miss one of these videos. Thanks again, everybody. Have a great day.